Did you know there was once a Disney-esque type theme park in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee called Magic World? There sure was. We're going to dig into the history and check out some amazing vintage photos right after that intro. Roll that intro. Yeah. I just want to see the light. Hi all, Keith here. Welcome to the video. Before we go too much further, make sure you pause the video, click the subscribe button, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Also, go ahead and smash that like button for me, and let's get into it. Alright, so Magic World, what was it? Well, in short, it was an amusement park that lasted from 1971 to 1996 in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, right there on the parkway. You entered through a volcano that had an aquarium inside. Merlin the Magician was there, not far from the land of Arabian Nights. And they had a haunted castle there that was kind of similar to Disney's Haunted Mansion. They also had a flying saucer you could get into and watch an IMAX-esque movie to get a flying saucer's view of the Great Smoky Mountains. They also had a Confederate Critter show. They had like Chuck E. Cheese-esque style animatronics. And they would sing you mountain ballads. So that was an overview of some of the craziness they had there at the park. But you might be asking, Keith, where was Magic World? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's take a look here. What we're looking at here is Professor Hacker's Lost Treasure Golf, which is actually the location where Magic World was. And let me show you how I know. Pay attention to some things here on the map, namely the entrance right here and the entrance right here and the volcano in the ship. Oh, that's very important. But also, take a look up here. You can see some remnants of some things that were once there. And there's also a very distinguished tree line right here for some old growth trees, which really helps pinpoint some things. And also, take a look at this uh, parking lot that's like a, it's like a strip mall or something right now. But the shape of this right here and this road specifically that goes up right past the treasure golf. Okay, now let's take a look at the vintage map. So remember I said watch for the entrance, the entrances. Well, here's the entrance. Here's the pirate ship. Here's another entrance and haunted castle. But also remember I said, look at that road that went right by the facility there. It's this little area right here. And this parking lot is actually the back parking lot where that restaurant or that shopping mall was today. And this right here was where some of those ruins were. These two buildings right here, the magic ship and the magic carpet ride for the land of Arabian Nights and Merlin's Rainbow Magic Show. And actually, right here, this Confederate Critter Show, this is actually where the Alamo Steakhouse is right now. So now that we have a lay of the land of Magic World, let me go back to the Google Earth view and let me line some things up for you. If we look back, you'll see this entrance right here. This, which is a Hardee's right now, actually was this entrance right here, the second entrance where the Magic Castle was. And right behind the Magic Castle, using the volcano as the point of reference, you see is the Confederate Critter Show. Well, what's behind where the Magic Castle was? Again, using the volcano as the point of reference here, because the volcano is the same volcano that was there before. And also, this pirate ship is the same ship that's right here. They just moved the orientation a little bit. And actually, this little entrance into the Magic World, which this is how you got into it through the pirate ship, is actually right here. I don't know if you can see, but there's like a little bridge right here that goes into the volcano. This was the entrance right here. So this pirate ship was facing this way before, but they cut off the back half of it and then made it a putt-putt hole here. And actually, interestingly enough, see these dinosaur bones right there? That pays homage to this little guy right here, I think. This dinosaur that used to be there, but now he's just bones. But anyway, back to the haunted castle here. We saw right here was that Hardee's, and then right behind it in the old olden days was the Confederate Critter Show, but again, using our ship in our volcano that's existing as a point of reference, you can actually see the Haunted Castle was here. You can even see the indentation 
where it was. And the Confederate Critter Show was actually right here where the Alamo Steakhouse is currently. So this building right here, this ruin right here, that was right behind the Confederate Critter Show is actually, see, th this is where the Hardee's was, this is where the Alamo Steakhouse is, and this was that ruin that I showed you right there. It was actually where Merlin's Rainbow Magic Show was, and then right next to that is the Land of Arabian Nights. You can see that ruin right here. This right here, this section right here was the Land of Arabian Nights. You can sort of still see the foundation of it right there. That's pretty cool, huh? Now, if we look back at the parkway, again, here's the main entrance and the pirate ship that was this way but now they moved it this way and this little hut right here was actually the gift shop let me show you what i mean so entrance gift shop and then right behind the gift shop was the volcano entrance and the flying saucer experience also again like i said right by the gift shop was this little uh, parking lot area that went back to this little very distinctly shaped parking lot and that lines up with this road right here that wasn't a road previously if you look, see the entrance was right here, the pirate ship, the gift shop. This would have been the actually the parking lot that went beside Magic World. And this parking lot right here is the exact same shape as that back parking lot was previously. So this was like the overflow lot it looked like. And this part wasn't here. This looks like an addition because it just sort of followed straight across. So I think this is new parking lot up here. But this shape right here was all the parking lot for Magic World, which again, and you came into this entrance, went back here, and there's that very distinctly shaped parking lot right next to the Arabian Nights attraction. And you can see this parking lot is right next to where we lined up the Arabian Nights attraction to be. This is the ruins right here, right behind Magic World. So that this was the actually the overflow parking lot. So if you've ever played at Professor Hacker's Mini Golf there in Pigeon Forge, you were steady on theme park history. Bet you never knew that. So I was able to find some brochures from Magic World. So I want to go through a few of these real fast because they're just fascinating just to see the vintage coolness of them. So let's start with this brochure from the Land of Arabian Nights. So here it is, your magic carpet ride and all. But anyway, let me read this to you just in case you can't see it. It says, enter the land of Arabian Nights and never, never land like you've never, ever seen. Kitschy, I guess. Experience the magic and intrigue of the Middle East as you make your way through a busy marketplace of old Arabia. You'll visit adobe shops laden with wares from the caves of Alibaba and even exotic belly dancers from the kingdom's harem. This ride is not that PC... <laughs> today's standards, but, you know, it was the 70s and 80s. Come on now. Carefully, now, as you soar above the ancient city in the enchanted magic carpet ride and find yourself in the presence of Aladdin and his all-powerful genie of his wonderful magic lamp. Oh, keep your eyes peeled for Alibaba and his 40 thieves. So... I don't know. That was a vintage fun attraction. And now you start to see a little bit of what I mean when I say this was Disney-esque. But speaking of Disney-esque, let's check out the Haunted Castle. Here's a brochure for the Haunted Castle. Now, if you've ever been to the Haunted Mansion at Disney, you know this scene looks very similar to the one in the room where all the ghosts are having the party. There's another picture down to the uh, bottom right here that looks like uh, someone's trying to escape the casket. Yeah, that picture is pretty Pretty similar to that room in the Haunted Mansion where the guys try to get out of the coffin. Very similar. <laughs> but let's read the description. The doors creak to close behind you and so begins your eerie ride through the haunted castle. As you nestle yourself into your seat, prepare to meet some of the ghoulish ghosts that roam the towers and stalk the dungeons in this medieval castle. With the clank of your carriage down you go through the dark corridors where you hear the chilling screams and rattling chains of those poor souls bound forever in the fiendish chamber of horrors hear the frenzied chords of the phantom organist and gasp at the mad headsman goes about his gruesome task. Okay, well, Disney doesn't have a guy that beheads people, so yeah, I guess that's different. Rest easy as you leave the land of darkness and prepare to re-enter the world of the living. But who knows? Someday you may return to visit us once again. We'll be waiting for you. That's kind of like how the haunted mansion ends. It's like, if you know, you know, but it's like it, 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 ends, it says there's like 999 happy haunts, but there's room for a thousand. It's kind of like... 
<laughs> very similar. And now let's take a look at the Flying Saucer, which was like a movie that you basically set in, kind of IMAX style or pre-IMAX style actually, but you set in it and you flew over the Smoky Mountains. Here's a picture of it. You can see you fly over like Klingman's Dome there in the mountains. It says, Earthlings, prepare yourself for an adventure not of this Earth. Board a strange metallic spaceship piloted by beings from the red planet Mars. Hold on to your seats as the ship seems to leave Earth and takes you on a breathtaking panoramic film tour of the Great Smoky Mountains. Sounds fun, right? Let's go aliens. You'll be spellbound as the saucer climbs and soars over Klingman's Dome, barely missing the mountaintops. Then suddenly you dive temporarily out of control towards the deep waters of Montana Lake. Look below as Gatlinburg passes beneath your hovering spacecraft. But don't tell your friends. You've seen it from a flying saucer. They'll never believe you. Kitschy and cool. And actually for the day it was pretty cool, but I did hear like stories of like how you could see the helicopter shadow on the mountainside as you're doing this attraction. So it sort of took you out of it a little bit and like, you know, let you know, hey, they did this by recording uh, from a helicopter. But hey, for the time frame, I think it was pretty cool. Now let's take a look at Merlin's Magic Show. First off, I can't get over the big head Merlin here. Kind of looks like a sports, <laughs> sports mascot of some sort, right? <laughs> but anyway, it says you'll be astounded and confounded by the mythical illusions performed by the great mentor himself, Merlin Rainbow. Merlin Rainbow? What? I guess Merlin was copyrighted? Merlin and his worthy assistants will be sure to dazzle you with lively song and dance with astounding display of magical powers. The wizardry is so baffling that the great Houdini would be amazed. Really? Really? He, he would be amazed? So for the highlight of your visit, don't miss Merlin's Magic Show. You'll see sights like you've never, ever seen. The Magic Show operates June, July, and August only. And I think that's because it was like an outdoor theater type thing. Now let's take, it, take a look at the last brochure I have here from the Confederate Critter Show. Okay, and again... <laughs> We could tell this was from a different time. I mean, this might not be considered a great show in today's standards, but, you know, eh, it is what it is, right? Okay, so let's look past that for a second here to look at the vintage goodness of this and just take a look at these animatronics like it was straight out of Chuck E. Cheese's, it looks like. <laughs> I don't know how long Chuck E. Cheese has been around, but maybe these were the inspiration for the Chuck E. Cheese characters, but they look similar. Anyway, it says hoot and holler and sing along with the Confederate critters, those lovable, electronically animated gentlemen of the Old South. You'll grin as General Cornelius Bear Patch. Cornelius Bear Patch? I mean, who can't love that name? Spins his yarn, strums his guitar, and sings some of your favorite mountain ballads. Then tap your toes and slap your knee to the banjo picket of Colonel Stonewall J. Fox. And Major Moby Greyhound III will rock the house down with his rinky-tink piano. It's the Confederate Critter Show, and it's some good time, Waylon, like you've never seen or heard. I mean, who doesn't want to see that show? <laughs> oh, it was a different time, folks. It was a different time, but that actually looks kind of kitschy and cool. With a little re-theming, I bet it would fly in today's world. Okay, I know I said I had that was the last one, but I think I have a few more brochures I found here. So let's look at the Dinosaur Museum. First, who wouldn't want to ride the dinosaur train through the dinosaur land? I mean, I would. That looks amazing. It says, travel back in time as you board the dinosaur train. You'll wind through mysterious dinosaur valley, a land ruled by giant prehistoric monsters. Also, visit our dinosaur museum, where you'll see life-size replicas of creatures who walked the earth millions of years ago. That was kind of cool. But also, if you look at the right side of this brochure, you'll see the way it was folded, they got some extra information over here that's kind of cool, too. It says, don't miss the 80-foot aquarium deep in the heart of vol the Volcano Mountain. See, that's like where you entered... And and where I showed you on Hackers Mini Golf, the volcano that was right there, there was actually an aquarium there. Have your picture with movie monsters, Frankenstein, Count Dracula, or the jaws of the great white shark. Okay, looking at that picture of uh, Frankenstein right there, I'm not sure how many kids would be like, yes, let me get my picture taken with Frankenstein, but 
I'm sure there was at least that kid that loved it. <laughs> and also, I love how they have in here about, like, taking pictures. They really wanted you to take pictures of this place. Down here at the bottom, it says, Plenty of film can be found in your various gift shops, so be sure to take lots of pictures to show folks at home. They knew marketing back then. Have everyone take a lot of pictures, show your friends, so your friends want to come there. Which is the same concept as all this stuff that you see from the theme park vloggers today but anyway it says try a refreshing break at our snack bar filled with cool drinks and delicious treats remember to visit our gift shops and take a magic world souvenir home to remind you of your adventures then further adventures through the great beautiful pigeon forge gatlinburg and the great smoky mountains national park you won't want to leave this never never land like you've never ever seen okay the marketing person that wrote this brochure Chef's kiss. <laughs> they knew what they were doing, okay? This <laughs> this brochure is amazing. And I wanted to show you the one last brochure here. What you're looking at here is the unfolded backside of the brochure that talks about the flying saucer, how you can shake hands with Dizzy the dinosaur, the dragon th train through the dinosaur valley, and kind of some cool vintagey pictures here. I don't know. I just think this stuff is kind of cool just looking back in time here. So that was like the vintage map in brochure, right? But Magic World did evolve over time and they changed some of the shows and they took out some things to, you know, get with the times, if you will. And I actually did find a map from 1991 that shows how the park kind of changed. So here's a 1991 map. And as you can see, the castle right there they have like bumper boats in front of it and over here was where the spaceship was but now they got like a dragon roller coaster and like a climbing area and stuff like that and back behind the confederate critter show which was still there <laughs> to the end they added like a vintage car thing where you could like drive the cars around and stuff like that they did add a ferris wheel which is right here at number 18 and the arabian nights thing was still <laughs> there so some of the things were still there but as you can see, they sort of did like change the rides and things like that because like I said, the spaceship was right in this area and they took all that out, which I don't know, that would have been cool, but I guess it, it was probably dated and things like that. So they wanted to update it and make it more, you know, theme parky because let's be honest, like back in the day, there wasn't a whole lot going on in Pigeon Forge. So there wasn't like a lot of competition, but then Dollywood came in. And so Magic World, not say that it wasn't as relevant, but it it wasn't as updated and modern of a theme park as, say, Dollywood was at the time, even at the time. So there was a little bit of a decline there, but not really because there were still a ton of people that loved this park. I mean, it had been there since the 70s, so just imagine 20 years of a theme park visiting with your family and whatnot. You're going to have some good memories there, so this was definitely, definitely still a popular attraction there in Pigeon Forge. So what did them in, though? They had a lease for the land, right? And by 1996 everything's getting popular in Pigeon Forge and land was leasing for like insane amounts. I mean the original lease for this land was $60,000 a year so you can see $60,000 a year was just I mean they had that for 20 years which was just amazing especially for that area. The owners were ready to sign a lease for $350,000 right? They were ready to pony up. They were still making money everything was still good but the land owners at the time in Pigeon Forge were like, I don't want to say greedy, but let's just say a restaurant signed a lease for a million dollars for the land. So you can imagine that this property, they wanted at least a million dollars. Well, the owners here, they, they went up to $650,000 for the lease, but that still wasn't good enough. They wanted like right around that million dollar mark. So Magic World ended up having to close because essentially they couldn't stay solvent with the lease on the land that they were going to have to pay. Okay, so that's what ultimately did in Magic World, which is sad because it was such a cool park and there were so many people with so many great memories from Magic World. I can only imagine. Anyway, were you lucky enough to go to Magic World when it was in there in Pigeon Forge? I know I definitely drove past Magic World a few times and actually I know I've been to Hackers Mini Golf there in Pigeon Forge several times and I had no idea it was once Magic World. <laughs> if you were at Magic World, let me know down there in the comments. 
if you missed the park and what was your favorite attraction. All right, everyone, we're going to go ahead and wrap this video up here, but make sure you hang out for a little bit longer because we'll have some end cards with some video suggestions and we'd love it if you'd watch another video. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Also, click the join button down there below to find out all the great benefits of becoming a member of the channel. Make sure you check out our merch shelf down there below. We got all kinds of cool designs and some new ones coming soon. Also, don't forget to head over to our coffee page. It's just a way for you to drop us like a virtual tip or buy us a coffee. Any way you choose to support the channel, we really appreciate it. Also, I'd like to pause and thank everyone that made it this far in the video. Y'all are really in it with us and we appreciate you more than you'll know. Say Merlin's Magic down there in the comments below to let me know that you made it this far into the video. All right, everyone. We'll catch you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. Peace and love. Love.